So first things first, tip everything out and then measure it all out to make sure you ordered the right lengths. It may also be worth adding a few screws to the joins just to make it a little bit stronger. Although I didn't see any issues as there's plenty of friction in each joint. I did start cutting out the tabs where they interfered, but this wasn't really an issue as they would just slide past each other. And that's where the mallet came in. But making up this cabinet, I realised there was a little bit of oversight on my part. I assumed that the hinges rotated through 270 degrees, so the front could lift up and over the top, but it will only travel just over 180 degrees. So that meant a little redesign using the parts I already had and could use the hinges in a different way. So I opted for a door hinge on the left side that would open the whole front, which actually worked out a lot easier to be fair and made the cabinet a little bit stronger. The other problem was that the hinge has got four sections to it and I only needed three. Luckily there's one bolt going through and this fitted and locked into the top of the hinge. Then I could just screw one down and add a three part hinge. Sorted. Now I had to figure out how it was all going to go together. The good thing about this easy fix is that it all comes apart and can go back together quite easily, so there was no real drama. I had to make a few modifications to the frame, where the beams across the top now only had two connectors. But with the tab at the front, you could cut a couple of slots in it, and then add a couple of rivets to hold it in place. I think the hardest part of this one was making the door, but for the size of the door it's actually quite strong in the end. So the door needed a couple of aluminium plates to make it a little bit stronger. 
And as you can see, I found the easiest way to secure things to this cabinet was to use the rivets. And this was actually a lot stronger than I was expecting. Using parts for a different style cabinet, there was a few short lengths that just needed connecting together. So I decided to use a couple of bars of steel, four holes and four rivets in each. But as you can see, all this hassle just because I thought the hinges moved through 270 degrees. I guess that's a lesson learned. So there you have it, one cabinet. Just needs a top putting on. Although as you can see, the hinge makes one side stick out. So it's not quite square on the left side. Then there's the back to put in, and I use this 10mm polycarbonate because it's nice and light and can just be riveted in place. And it also adds to the rigidity of the frame. Also it's nice and easy to drill through the acrylic sheets and just rivet these in place. And that's where these tabs come in handy. So I decided to cable tie the top on rather than rivet it on because I need to get to the top of the milling machine later on. The size of the acrylic sheet for the front was ordered on the original design, so I had to stick it together using the clear Gorilla Tape. And there you have it, one Swarf Collector. It looked a bit like this, without a wonky back leg. 
So it's just a case of putting it over the milling machine, cutting a slot out the back of the top. Good job I'll put them cable ties in, and then wiring it all back up. Once the frame was screwed down to the board, it was actually really solid, then also got used as a table. So with the milling machine set up and connected back to its batteries, then it was just a little test to make sure that the milling machine didn't hit any of the sides of the cabinet. This mill is actually fully solar powered. With the X and Y axis are brushless DC motors running off 12 volts, and the spindle motor is 240 volts, but that's via a 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter. And this is just connected into this battery box with an abundance of fuses, and then connected to a 50 watt solar panel in the garden. And now the cabinet catches around 95% of the chips, where there's a little gap between the hinge and the perspex. It's taken a little while to get this video out, and that's because we've just moved house. Uh, but it's now got a nice little place in the garage, with some LED strips on both sides. I hope you've enjoyed this video and please have a look at all the other creations that I've made where I'm trying to only use solar energy. So if you've liked this video please like, subscribe and share. This helps to support my channel and other future projects. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.